Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I just took my son to Denny's. And it is very hard to eat at Denny's when you are trying to eat right. But I did do the best that I could, and I sat there and I watched him eat pancakes with bananas and all the whole thing. It was tough to watch, but I sat there while, eat, while eating my English muffin, and I grinned and bared it. <laughs> is that the right way to say it? Now... Boy, last night did we have an exciting time. Now, I want to take advantage of what happened last night because I know there are a flood of new people that have come in. And XRP Darren reminded me of the bigger picture, and I'm going to show you in a second what he put out and show you how you can subscribe to this guy. But it's easy to get caught up in, in these cryptocurrency, these surges and bull runs and, and um, pumps or whatever you want to call them. But now that we've got a bunch of new eyeballs here, now that you've been uh, drawn to this, I want to show you what Ripple and XRP really is. I want to show you what those of us who have been here for a while have seen and open your eyes to how much bigger of a picture, <clears throat> excuse me, to how much bigger of a picture, how much bigger of a thing this is. This is not about XRP going up a bunch in, in a week or going up a bunch yesterday. This is a much larger thing going on, and I'm going to show you. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, it never fails. Right when I start talking is when my voice gets weird, and until then, I'm talking just fine. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to do the best I can here. Let me drink a little bit of this coffee and see if I can get rid of this. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, maybe that's better. All right. So, so first I want to go over kind of what happened last night and, or what, what's been going on in the market. And we can see XRP is starting to head back up now, which is exciting. Um, but, but this is what the market, uh, looked like. And, and it got as high as I think 350 billion. Now it's down to, I believe, 331 or so billion in the market. Um, but let's, let's look at what, what happened. So last night, this market, the XRP surged as high as 32 cents. I mean, this week has been crazy, but it went as high as 32 cents. And then, and then what happened is Bitcoin, and I'll show you an article on it. <clears throat> uh, but Bitcoin, this is what always happens. Just so you know, those of you that are new, this is what always happens. Look, nothing goes up in a straight line. My, my father, the official father of the Digital Asset Investor Channel, has always told me that. Nothing goes up in a straight line, even crypto. Sometimes crypto goes up in a very straight line for for a lot longer than the stock market would, but nothing forever goes up in a straight line. It's 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 going to be a bumpy road to where I know we're going, um, but that's just the way markets are. Okay, and it's a young market, and for that reason, it'll be pretty bumpy along the way. But but if, you, if you've seen nothing this week, um, I've heard so many people say, oh, we're not going to have another thing like the 2017 bull run. Bull is what I say to that. This market is so young that those of us that believe in what this really represents, um, a market this young there's no, there's really no choice but to have major run because there's so much money left to come in. And so we're so, so early. It's the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. And so, yeah, you're going to see some major runs and some major price increases. It's the, it's a natural part of the market being so young. It's, it, it, unless you just believe crypto is going to disappear. And I don't think anybody believes that at this point. Um, so anyway, this is what it did yesterday. And I want to show you what this looks like. Um, right here, I'm refreshing. This is the return rates for the last seven days, 30 days, one quarter. Look at XRP, 29% in seven days, 57% in 30 days, one quarter, 29%. Okay. And, and so you can kind of see what is happening. Now here, this is important. Those of you new, especially that you understand the way this game works. XRP 
has been in a bear market for three years. It begins to surge, okay? And still, to this day, which is ridiculous because Bitcoin is nothing in XRP's league, but still, to this day, what happens is as the market surges, Bitcoin whales and traders, people that are, are trying to manipulate things, can kick it back down. Now, in my opinion, even though it's painful to watch when that happens, it's a healthy part of the market. It's the way markets work. Um, but that's what happened last night. Bitcoin dropped like 1500 in a very short period of, of time. And that's nothing more than some big whale that's made a bunch of money and, and he's going to go right back in once he kicks the market down. Um, so I wanted you to be aware of that. Now, let's talk. Any of you who have not been listening for long, pay close attention here because I'm about to show you the big picture, what XRP and Ripple really are about. Okay, the, and, and XRP, I want you to all go subscribe. It's Darren Moore Jr. Go give him a subscribe. Um, I watched his this video of his last night, and and it, it it was a good reminder of, yeah, these price increases, this is exciting, but this is so much bigger, even than what you saw, even than that 32 cent run to 32 cent. This is so much bigger of a thing. This is a worldwide change of the entire financial system thing. And it's important that those of you that don't, that don't know that watch this, because I'm about to show you, I'm going to show you a minute, a minute of his video. This is the lady, uh, I, I, I'm drawing a blank on her name, but she runs the IMF now. Christine Lagarde went to the EU, the European, um, what do you, uh, Oh, uh, what do you call it? Anyway, the EU, Christine Lagarde left the IMF and went to the EU, uh, Europe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember it once this video is over. But anyway, so this lady took over at the IMF for Christine Lagarde. Listen to what she says. Aligned uh, in a way that that was only possible, uh, is only possible after a big, uh, big shock. Uh, um, remember the bread. It's only possible after a big shock. You mean... Never let a crisis go to waste. The woods. Well, now is our moment to. Now remember, she just said this is this is like Bretton Woods. This is what we've been talking about for two years. And remember, Bretton Woods was it was right after I think it was right towards the end of World War II. Bretton Woods was when the IMF was formed. The IMF, all of this, the IMF, all of it was for the purpose. Of the, they, they put that's when the the, the uh, gold standard happened, okay, and then in seventy one, I believe Richard Nixon more or less broke the agreement and took the U.S. off the gold standard. This is all about the IMF. It's all about gold. It's all about all of the money, folks. Listen to what else she says. Reinvent, reimagine uh, the world. The Great Reset is underway. For those that don't know, Bretton Woods was how the U.S. dollar became the world's currency. Global leaders met at Bretton Woods to decide this. My lesson in my lifetime is focus on those who are the drivers of change. Empower them. Get everybody excited. And then... The IMF has empowered Ripple from the very beginning. Those who are sitting on the bench, I mean, they're, they're now looking this way and that way. And they're saying it may go right, it may go left. Get them to move off the bench and embrace change. Go for it. Uh, and I think uh, if we... Okay, I just wanted to play you that part. Now, Darren is right, okay? This is... It's all... We're on the verge of it. You're seeing this all unfold right before your eyes right now. It's not a coincidence that XRP has started to take off. I believe... That what you're beginning to see in the in this market is all of these people. I think everybody knows what's about to happen, and I think that that's what the sur what the surge has been about. I think that they know that it is upon us. Everything that we've been talking about in the about XRP and Ripple, everything we're we're there. I believe it's this year. I I don't believe it's a coincidence that Brad Garlinghouse said that this is the year of the digital asset. I believe it is. I believe it's it's much bigger than people even realize. And there, if you if I could if I could get everybody in this world to listen to what I am saying, I would say, listen, watch watch the video I'm, I'm presenting to you now. Any any of your friends and family who still have no idea what this really is, 
finish watching this video and go send it to your friends and family because I'm going to show you what's been going on for the last two years while the world was not watching, but we were here talking about it. All right. So IMF, right? Here's, um, this is Christine Lagarde, IMF Managing Director welcomes establishment of high level advisory group on FinTech, March 15th, 2017. Who was on that advisory board? Chris Larson, Executive Chairman of Ripple. Okay. And then there was this. Um, remember, many of you probably never saw this. That's a picture. IMF high level advisory group meets in Singapore to deepen discussions on FinTech. That is Brad Garlinghouse. This right here, that, that's Christine Lagarde. This right here is this girl right here, Jess Chang, who is, and she said this was one of the highlights of her career. There's the picture right there. And there she is. Who is, who's Jess Chang? Well, she's a, she's senior counsel at the Federal Reserve Board now. Before that, she was with the IMF. And before that, she was the deputy general counsel at Ripple. And what else is interesting is before that, Council and Officer, Federal Reserve Bank of New York. For those of you who were not, for those of you who were not, um, who are not aware, when we had the financial crisis, from the beginning of this channel, I've told you this is all about the financial crisis. It has everything to do with the financial crisis. All of this was put in motion during the financial crisis because they knew that, look, the financial crisis is when I knew that our country was not what I thought it was. That's when I knew that this scheme could not go on any longer. That's when I knew. That's when I started looking at gold and silver as an investment, and I eventually discovered digital assets. I knew at that moment. I've no known ever since, and it's all laid out right in front of you if you're paying attention. I feel sorry for the people who have not found out about what Ripple and XRP really is, but... but Send this video to them. Next, this is from Stephen from the Bull Dip. This is this is Ch that that lady I just showed you right here. This is her on stage at a TED talk, I believe. Other category of fintech innovation and payments is where you have a whole new payment method, a new way for money to move that's different from anything we've seen before. So this could be crypto assets or it could be a blockchain-based payment solution. And this is a space that I worked in at Ripple. And it's this space that I personally find fascinating and exciting. What's important about this category of fintech innovation is that you have a new way for value to flow. I want to pause right here just to share uh, what I deal with around my house for one second. So before I started this video, I specifically told my 14 year old not to play the guitar while I was doing this video. And what is he in there doing? He's in there playing the guitar. And I hope I'm talking loud enough for you to, for him to hear me speaking because don't play the guitar while I'm doing my video. Okay. Sorry. Now back to the world changing events that are taking place, but that's my world folks. So I just, I just had to share that with you. What's new is an opening up of the type of connections between people, institutions, entities all around the world. This is really important for cross-border payments. Payments generally flow pretty freely when it's just within a country, especially when people happen to have accounts with the same bank. But for payments from one country to another, that's where you run into inefficiencies and frictions, a foundation that can be legally enforced, a basis for trust. I wrote the payment rules for Ripple Solutions. All these countries around the world, they don't trust each other, but with blockchain technology, they could. They didn't have, they won't have I can to. tell you all about how I dealt with that spinny wheel. But there is something very deeply rewarding about creating clarity and certainty out of chaos. Crypto assets and blockchain, when they're used in the context of cross-border payments, they can create new paths for value to more efficiently flow 
around the world. There are real problems in cross-border payments that FinTech can uniquely solve for. There are real needs. So that's one takeaway I want to leave you with. The promise of FinTech is real. You're darn right it's real. And by the way, he's still playing that guitar. Only on this channel can you be talking about world-changing events such as Bretton Woods and the IMF and what's going on with all this. And at the same time, m myself getting mad at my son about playing the guitar in the background. What in the world is going on? But I guess that's what makes this fun. Okay, so now this is Ryan Zagone. If you've never, if you haven't, if you're just showing up to the party, folks, he was the guy that was in charge of regulatory relations at Ripple. He he doesn't work there now, but he but that's what he he did. It says Zagone manages Ripple's relationships with more than thirty central banks and regulators. Zagone is a delegate to the IMF's high level advisory group on fintech. He also serves on the advisory board of the United Nations Better Than Cash Alliance an effort to accelerate financial inclusion through electronic payments. Zagone served on the steering committee of the Federal Reserve's Faster Payments Initiative. Look, at this point already, you're going to see a lot more, but at this point already, I don't even think my eight-year-old need, eight needs to draw you a picture. I think that anybody that's listening, after a while, it's all right there. It's like laid out. Uh, it's like when I went to Denny's this morning. The menu's right there. You can see this. We're putting the menu right out in front of you. This is not about 32 cent XRP. It's about something far beyond that. Okay. Next, I went to Swell in, in Singapore 2019, and this guy's on stage. Uh, Raghram, his name is Raghram Rajan. He was the governor at the Reserve Bank of India. He was also, just so happens, he was the, by pure coincidence, I know, he was the chief economist at the International Monetary Fund from 2003 to 2006. Okay? Interesting, huh? Well, and then there was this. November 13th, 2017, Ripple hosts world's central banks to explore next generation of payments. You know, when I, when I talked to Greg Kidd, um, when I talked to Greg Kidd, one thing I said to him was, um, I said, and, and this is in one of the conversations. I don't even think it was an interview, but I, but I said to him, I said, Greg, you know why Ripple has kept my attention for all of, and by the way, Greg Kidd was one of the, one of the first guys at Ripple, but you know why Ripple has kept my attention? I said, I said, Greg, uh, I grew up in a, in a family business. We were builder developers, uh, for 20, 30 years. Okay. We never, ever. Uh, went to the U.S. Treasury like you, like you guys at Ripple did, because he's in a video where he says he went to the U.S. Treasury. I said, in 30 years, it wasn't even a thought to go to the U.S. Treasury because it wasn't even an option. But you said it in the video in just a ma matter of fact way. And that's why Ripple, one of the reasons that Ripple has kept my attention for all of this time, <laughs> because I know in, with every fiber of my being, I know that this is so much bigger than what, what, that when the world finds out what just happened, they are going to, most of them are going to be sick to their stomach because they didn't get in on the party. So Ripple hosts world central banks to explore. And, and when I see these things, I'm like, how did they get, how did they get the attention of, of all these central banks? What did they do? It says the summit started with a presentation from the International Monetary Fund on fintech's potential to change market structure, opening new possibilities in payments. Um, and so here, and, and then it's got a link um, in here, I believe. And so here it is. This is the this is on the IMF's website, fintech and cross border payments. Um, it was a pleasure to join you here today. It is it's a pleasure to join you here today at Ripple's Central Bank Summit. I wish I could have a central bank summit and be in the room with that many important people. A central bank summit? I've never heard of any company having a central bank summit except for Ripple. They have central bank summits, you know? Okay. And then there was this, Bank XRP. And if you don't follow him on Twitter, you should, at Bank XRP. Um, he, he's one of the, probably one of the the biggest uh, influencers in Twitter uh that I've seen for Ripple and XRP. 
Conference uh, International Monetary System hosted by the Swiss National Bank and the IMF on May 14th. Presentation by Brad Garlinghouse regarding XRP. Um, and then here is the, um, this is the video. And I'll show you more about this in a minute. But by the way, that's Christine Lagarde. And that is the guy that runs the BIS, which is the central bank of central banks. I'll just let you watch just a little bit of this. Yeah, I think they saved me for last so that I could uh, talk about the, the, the private sector version of this. I also start by kind of explaining the basics of what Ripple is and what Ripple is not. Uh, Ripple is a private company. We're based in California, uh, about three or 400 employees around the world. And we're trying to solve a problem. We're selling technologies to banks and financial institutions to solve a cross-border payments problem. To be clear, we have not focused on the central bank digital currency issuance. Uh, our view is very much there needs to be interoperability globally. There's that and word, even in yeah. a world of CBDCs, you still need interoperability to, to solve that problem. Uh, also, before I dive in, you know, my comments are more focused on kind of explaining how Ripple's... A okay, I just wanted to show you that... he. It's, you don't have a, a whole bunch of people from fintech on the stage. You've got central bankers, and then you have one guy, Brad Garlinghouse from Ripple, one guy from fintech. Okay, and then, um, so so here's these are pictures of the people that are in that room. I just want to show you this. Um, this is from at John S M I one three one zero eight eight six five. Um, so look at. I just want you to see. This okay. Here was Brad Garlinghouse speaking. This is Chief Executive Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Um, Christine Lagarde's here. The guy from the BIS is here. This is the Director of Monetary Markets for the IMF, and this is the Chairman of the Saudi Arabian Mo Monetary Authority. And so there's Brad Garlinghouse. There's Christine Lagarde. Now, all the the people in this room are all at that kind of level, but this lady right here, I, she's one that I remember from this picture. She runs the Russian Central Bank, folks. Russian Central Bank. All right. And then there's Christine Lagarde talking to Steve Mnuchin. As long as we're talking about this, we may as well go over a little, just a reminder. Steve Mnuchin worked at One West, or, or he, he bought IndyMac Bank during the financial crisis, and then it, it changed the name to One West Bank, Right. Where at One West Bank, he worked with the current controller of the currency who just made it okay for banks to custody digital assets. Okay. He, he, he then sold One West Bank to CIT Group. At CIT Group, he was on the board and who became the general counsel for CIT Group? Stuart Alderati, who is now the general counsel at Ripple. Okay. And he's just whispering in Christine Lagarde's ear. There's Mark Carney, who runs the Bank of England, or did, I think he did, I don't think he does now, Bank of England, who is also a Ripple partner, right? All right, um, and then let's move on along. Uh, action speaks louder than words. I just wanted to zero in on this. Um, this was from the, what I showed you earlier, but someone labeled all the people, so you can see who some of the people, I'll just find it. This guy's from the IMF. I'm just going to name a couple. And then you got this right here, Nazir Zabari from CEO of Luxembourg House of Financial Technology. So I was curious why you would have somebody there from Luxembourg, because I think Luxembourg plays a key role in this. And so I'm going to play you. Um, actually, I got this a little bit out of order. Let me see if I've got the thing I was going to show. I may have forgot. No, here it is right here. Hold on. I'm going to move that to right. Uh, not there. Right there. That, yeah, okay. Here's the Luxembourg guy right here. Now I want to play you a little clip from, this is the, this is the thing I sh that I sh uh, was talking about yesterday, um, from XRP Yo-Yo. Go subscribe XRP Yo-Yo on, uh, YouTube. This is a little clip. Entire, uh, societies. Yeah, and another one that nobody, Luxembourg oh, is yeah. another one that we should look for. Uh, Chris Larson, who is one of the founding members. Uh, is he's on the board up there in, in Luxembourg, and if you read the uh, IMF uh, in there, when in order to get into the basket of uh, currencies to be on the SDR, 
you have to have at least one country that um, adopts it, the a digital asset. If it were to be into, you know, into that basket, that one country would have to adopt it. In um, you know, Luxembourg, in a little uh, country called Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein. Okay. Um, and then there was this. This is uh, from Stephen Bull from the Diet, and this is Christine Lagarde. Into new technologies that will actually change the way in which intermediation is conducted. Eliminate some of the barriers, including the unconscious biases that exist out there. And, you know, I think in the, in the banking system at large in many, many countries, the difference will not be between those who are disrupted and those who um, survive, but it will be between those who are cannibalized because they are not seeing it coming and they're not embracing it and those who self-induce that cannibalization and i'm using cannibalization on purpose because it's a bit of a striking horrible word but it's really what it means it's you're going to disrupt your business model you're going to change it you're going to reduce your cost you are going to expedite your transactions and you're going to continue to inspire confidence because you will build that on the basis of an existing backbone which is your bank and the confidence relationship that you've established with your customers. So that's where I see changes happening now. If you think of Circle and Ripples and all those, that, that's where they are active and, and uh, helpful. Into new technologies that will... Like all right. Um, and then there was this one. This is Brad Garlinghouse, and he's on stage with the general counsel for the IMF. I think that's the guy's title. This is an old classic. You want to take one? Go for it. The first one's for you. IMF. Do you see IMF holding crypto assets in the future? I did not put that up there. Remember, I'm from the legal department. I'm supposed to be very conservative about these things. Um, I, I don't want to go into great details about Maybe the Maybe I should take what the IMF yeah, is going to uh, do. Uh, I think we stunned uh, Ross into silence with that one. For that to happen, okay, under the current legal framework, some country would have to use a crypto asset as its currency. Did you hear what he just said? Remember what the clip about Luxembourg said. It said that, remember the, how they said Luxembourg or Liechtenstein would be the country that would, that would adopt XRP as a currency or something that they needed at least one country to do that in order for this to happen. Okay. <laughs> All lies on Luxembourg and Liechtenstein, I guess. But the other thing I want to remind, there's two things I want you to get out of this video besides that, okay? One is Brad, Gar what's always struck me about this video is Brad Garlinghouse's uh, body language. I've never seen, I mean, you know, if you put me beside someone from the IMF, I would probably look a little bit nervous and a little, you know, this is a, you know, globally important person I'm sitting beside. Uh, my body language would probably be a little little more timid. And Brad Garlinghouse is the exact opposite of that. How could he possibly be that comfortable beside someone that's that powerful? He's very, like, overly comfortable, which which tells me a lot. The other thing I want you to get out of this is Ross Lecco, I think is his name. That's the same guy from the video I showed in my, uh, I was showing a video yesterday of Ryan Zagone. That's the same guy that was on stage with Ryan Zagone when Ryan Zagone was saying proof of work doesn't work. And Christine Lagarde in the past has said, not Bitcoin, not Ethereum. She said that too in video. All right. And then there was this. Anders uh, Lundberg had, um, had tweeted this back in September 2019. Coincidences. Ripple hold meeting for central banks where IMF appears in New York. IMF presented swell. Ross Leckow uh, from IMF follows Ripple and is together with Brad Garlinghouse alone on stage at a conference. At the BIS meeting in Switzerland in May 2019, Brad is placed at the front table and explains X-Rapid, which, which is now ODL, to a very prestigious audience. Christine Lagarde of the IMF is present. Ross Leckow leaves the IMF after 29 years for the BIS in September 1st. A couple of weeks later, Christine Lagarde is chosen, it's the ECB, that, what I was trying to think of earlier, chosen to lead the ECB. Speculation. Ross Leckow followed and learned from Ripple for his new role at the BIS. He will work at the Innovation Hub. What was the reason for all these meetings between Ripple and the central banks? Related to BIS, perhaps. Settlement between central banks. 
could ODL be a part of this? Could Ross Leckow help with this situation? And then Michelle uh, Vandenberg sent me this, which I, look, I think this is all about the IMF. I think it's all about gold. I think it's all about XRP. I, I, I think it's all about going back to a gold standard. Um, and, and I think it's very obvious, folks. I think it's, uh, this is so obvious. What, what it's, here's what it's not about, folks. It's not about these silly little pumps. Yes, they're exciting and we love watching, um, our, the values go up and I love it as much as anybody. But I wanted you all, especially you people that haven't been here that don't know this, I wanted you to know what this really is because it's such, this is a, this is a, a turn in the financial system that only happens every hundred years or so, folks. So be glad that you're here. Be, I, if it's the pump or whatever you want to call it that got you here, good for you. Now pay attention. Class is in session. Now listen, um, one thing that comes when these market surges happen, the hackers and the scammers come out of the woodwork. That's why I'm talking about a lot of security things having to do with digital assets. If you don't already have one, you need a VPN. It's a virtual private network. It's a software you download to your computer. And this is brief, a brief uh, description of what, how it can help you uh, to, to uh, prevent yourself from being hacked. Are you sure that you're safe while using public Wi-Fi? This can happen to anyone. Use Pure VPN, the most reliable and easy to use VPN. Protect yourself from rogue hackers. It's literally simple. If you're like me and you're you're technologically challenged, um, I'm 46 years old, and it, when someone first told me about the Pure VPN, I was like, man, that's. I don't even know anything about that kind of thing, but it's so simple. All you do is, um, and, and I've got a link in the description of all of my videos. They've got a seven day trial right now for, for 99 cents, but all you do is download the software. And then once you download the software, you can put it on your computer and on your phone. It's literally push a button and all of a sudden you're surfing the internet anonymously. It's a must have. I've got one. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that this thing is a lot bigger than just some pump. Thank you for listening.